Okay. <sighs> Welcome to the video. Okay, so you voted, I listened, and uh, we are listening to To Be Kind first today. I walked outside this morning and I was like, man, I gotta make a video out here. This is without a doubt the longest album I will ever listen to in one sitting. So it's gonna be a very new thing for me. Uh, it's gonna be testing my patience for sure. But uh, if all the music is good, then I don't think it'll be that hard. But yeah, I've, ne I've never listened to a swan song ever. I don't know what this is going to sound like at all. I think someone said post rock, but regardless, I'm looking forward to it. But yeah, uh, if you wanna recommend me any more swans, feel free to do that. And yeah, without further ado, let's get right into it. I'm very scared and uh, thank you for watching. All right, two hour album, 10 songs. Uh, we're gonna go on a journey here. Track number one is Screenshot. Starting off kind of subtle. Sounds like a kind of clock. What are you saying, nouns? What kind of sound is that? It's like very deep, it's very sinister. No touch, no loss, no hand, no sin. piano is flowing right now. It's like a feeling of something is coming. Shit just got real. I need to get some water. I think that song uh, was referencing a lot of different kind of themes of life and experiencing them in a very condensed moment. It, it, it was definitely very present, you know, him screaming here, now, here, now. It, it was almost kind of demanding. A lot of different visuals in my head going on due to a lot of, you know, different kinds of words uh, being, you know, put together at once. I think basically just to resemble life in itself. But regarding the pacing of that song instrumentally, I think that uh, it's just crazy how we spent so much time building up and the little climax there of all the sounds happening was just only for like a minute and a half. And it really made that, you know, moment at the end feel so much more intense. And I've never heard vocals like that before. It, it, it's He sounds kind of evil, to be honest. He sounds kind of sinister. He's talking, his tone of voice sounds very powerful. You know, like he has power over something. But yeah, first track down, that honestly flew by. I actually really did like that song though. Okay, track number two is Just a Little Boy.
Very slow paced. Now sleep in the bell of Walmart. Like she's pregnant. And I sleep in the bell of rhythm. He's sleeping in a lot of places. What? What? I'm just a little boy. <laughs> Why are you saying oh? Who's laughing? It's like sitcom laughter. Was that his vocal? Was that whole thing his, his, his vocal? But he's going insane right now. Then what are you? Yo, me too, man, but you're sounding a little crazy right now. What was that? You just got wild and then you just came right back. My bad. I want that part to go on for way longer, dude. So I think I'm going to decide to correlate that song meaning with the album cover of, you know, just being a little boy. As you see, the little boy on the cover is just kind of crying. When little kids cry, they're kind of desperate for something. And it seems like him on that song is desperate for um, maybe things like love and just he just kind of wants to feel safe on that song. And he's, I, I feel like he feels as if he's being looked down upon by other people due to the laughing. So he's just kind of dumbing himself down to a child and, you know making his needs very simple. He's also singing in a way as if he's just sick of it, you know, mid midway through the song. You know, he's singing kind of like a child, you know, when a child is whiny. He was kind of mimicking that tone, I believe. All right, track number three is A Little God In My Hands. This doesn't sound that dark. All right, what was that?
Everything just came at me there. What kind of vocals are these? shit is taking place right now i can't i cannot even tell you i cannot even tell you dude i'm fucking flabbergasted i gotta talk about how uh first things first how that last verse uh went into that chaotic instru instrumentation the way he said mind like the way he prolonged the word and then into that was that was crazy i think maybe that song was maybe about a criticism uh towards i don't know if it's towards like god or religion or just like the universe in general and uh it's never ending nature that humans bring to it i got the context that he might be talking about god when he said uh no flood will ever come i don't know if he's talking about like the kind of like a noah's ark kind of flood maybe he said that because you know maybe there's no end in sight to the madness and uh behavior that humans bring and i think it's driving him crazy in a way and it's it's funny because what, what it does remind me of sound wise is that when he says the universal mind uh i think about you know obviously the universe is a big thing and it seems like we can hear the sound of the universe uh from what i would interpret after the verse uh after the first verse and the second verse when all the sounds just start getting crazy i picture that kind of being the wrath of everything so far, songwriting-wise, I think that was my favorite on this so far. Okay, track number four is one that I was uh, not really looking forward to going into this, but uh, I actually am pretty excited. We have Bring the Sun slash uh, Toussaint La Overture. I don't know. That sounds like a French word. 34 minutes is crazy, dude. This is going to be wild. It's been going on for a while now. Okay. I'm just kind of spacing out. Oh. Okay. What is happening? What are these vocals?
Is he even saying words? Okay, until anything happens, I'm, I'm just gonna think about what I want for dinner. building towards something. I like how the velocity of these drums keeps changing. It's kind of flowing like really nicely. I don't know how it keeps getting faster. I don't know how I don't know how it keeps getting faster. Tell him to bring out the sun. <laughs> Do you guys want to see in Interstellar where he's like falling through like all the different timelines? I think that this sounds like that. I don't know why, but it, it sounds like that. It sounds like through a song through something. Like something's like being cut through. That horse isn't like around me, isn't it? It's 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 in the song, right? <laughs> this isn't even a song anymore, it's a fucking experience. Sounds like something is screaming. The whole song is screaming, actually. Like a 
computer just said, my computer couldn't take it. <laughs> Where the fuck am I? Yo, two cent, you're in you're in deep shit right now, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know who you are, but you're you're it sounds like you're fucked. Liberty! I don't even know who the f <laughs> What are we what are we doing? So fast. Whatever, whatever, whatever that translates to. Bro, I'm scared for two cent. This guy's a mean tongue roll. We're just screaming. This is an incomprehensible amount of sounds. To be honest, I don't remember what my life was like 34 minutes ago. Obviously, uh, it's going to be very hard for me to analyze that meaning-wise because uh, the first half of the album, album, song, honestly, album is kind of, kind of fits because I've reacted to albums shorter than that song. Bring the sun. I don't know what we mean by bring the sun exactly. Reading these lyrics here for my own um, analyzation, uh, maybe we're looking for some kind of freedom. I can't specifically say what the meaning of bring the sun means because I it's just it was just kind of one line repeated over and over again for like 15 minutes. The pacing on that was just crazy too. The tempo just kept raising it just kept getting faster and I didn't think that it was going to I didn't even think that that was capable capable of happening. I'm surprised that it managed to even keep me entertained for that long. And uh I I think speaking on the second half of the song um to Saint La I don't know. I forgot how to pronounce. Uh, I'm reading this. This is not. I didn't think of this. Uh, Toussaint Louverture was a uh, former slave. So shout out to him, I guess. Uh, the, but the way uh, our vocalist is singing towards uh, this guy, it doesn't sound very kind. No pun intended. But uh, it sounds like he's kind of speaking to him in an enemy kind of way. He shouts freedom, freedom, and then the track kind of goes crazy uh i think maybe that kind of the sound is maybe to simulate war 
like a war kind of sound. But yeah, I think I did good listening to that. I think I, I think I managed to hold myself down pretty well on that. Yeah, definitely liked that song. Uh, do do y'all find like replay value in this? I gotta know though. <laughs> All right, track number five is "Some Things We Do." We see. We feel. We need. We fight. We heal. We fuck. We do. We pray. We hate. We crawl. We see. Like we as a species in general? We love. We love. We love. We love. We love. Kind of talking about uh, basic things that humans do, whether good or bad. Uh, the lyrics ended off kind of optimistically saying we love. I mean, gen generally lo loving is a good thing, but the way he was saying it, didn't make it seem like it. It sounded very kind of like evil. A little background uh, vocal. I don't know if that was a, a female vocal or something else, just slightly uh, higher pitched. Uh, I feel like that added a lot to his his vocal as well. It sounded like a like there was more than two people talking. It sounded like there, it was like a chant almost. Yeah. So first disc. Uh, initial thoughts. I'm scared, but I'm I'm willing to keep going. All right. We had to take things inside because my laptop battery was saying, uh, I can't do this anymore. So we are on the second disc now. I don't know what's going to change, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, track number one or six is She Loves Me. Oh, no. She Loves Us. Sorry. Okay, another chord. Are these female vocals though, like leading it? It sounds like she's saying meow. Seems like we're kind of transitioning a little bit. This is so chaotic, dude. I don't know. Oh my god, yo, relax. What does that even mean? You 
No, silly, that's not my name. Who's he mad at? I'm severely uncomfortable. I don't know why I'm bobbing my head. Oh, there's a little like gliding guitar in like the left channel. I like that. No, I don't understand. This sounds like a downward spiral right now. This is actually scary. Like, this is actually, like, I'm actually scared. If I had to make a guess, even though I have no clue, I would say that song was maybe about sex, possibly. Maybe intimacy and how he's just overall sick of it. He kind of feels a lot of anger towards it, I think, and how it's kind of losing meaning to him. There's not really a lot of context into who she is. Uh, I have no clue who the song is about, who who he's referring to, whose name is Fuck. Uh, I, that's a pretty crazy name to have. Yeah, definitely the most scary song yet. Uh, start, starting the disc off with that, that is crazy. That is crazy. It felt actually way longer than 17 minutes too. It felt like, that felt like half, that felt like the length of the fourth song. Like honestly. Yeah, I don't know why Mao 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 kept getting repeated, but uh, yeah. Cool ideas, man. <laughs> All right, track number seven is Kirsten Supine. Sounds like a ball has just like dropped and just started rolling away. I think like the, the female vocal has a lot there. It's easily a lot more tame than the other songs so far. Well, the, the lyrics are finished, so like I'm expecting the, ins the instrumental to get crazy. I feel like I hear like church bells. Oh, the guitar on the right channel is crazy. Oh. 
instrumentally so far i think i like that song maybe the best a very intense ending as usual for some of these songs and uh yeah kristen supine i don't know what any of those lyrics meant so you know what that means i couldn't analyze something that i don't know i had to look it up and apparently that whole song was based off a movie scene off of this girl uh laying naked on a on a rock and so yeah i'm not sure what that has to do with uh the whole themes of everything so far but maybe it's kind of related to the the song previously on the f second disc uh be maybe in a sexual manner it seems like the uh song talks a little bit about death as well talking about planets crashing there's a black horse so yeah kind of scary subject matter but uh, regardless, I thought that song was very good. I thought it was paced very well. All right, track number three is Oxygen of Disc 2. I like this bass line, man. His vocal there, wow, that was kind of cool. Bro, I need some fucking oxygen. This shit is suffocating me. That was crazy. Okay, that was my favorite song uh, so far. I actually really did enjoy the energy on that. And it was it's actually probably <laughs> the first song so far that uh, maybe second that I would actually like throw in a playlist. <laughs> Shout out to Oxygen, uh, my inhaler users out there. I know y'all like that shit. I know y'all love this song. I think maybe that song might have been just a celebration of uh, him being alive and him not really being afraid to die in general. I got that vibe when he said, um, what do you say? said he said mr skull uh i am not scared of your call uh i know what call means i know what that word means but i think that you know he's basically talking to, to just talking to death there maybe saying that he's not afraid or maybe he just doesn't see himself dying because uh you know he has oxygen and when, you know when you breathe you're alive so yeah i thought that was a great song i'm definitely gonna be listening to that on my run track number nine or number four is uh nathalie neal Is he yodeling? 
Bro, I feel like I'm in a Buddhist monastery right now. Is this, is this a piano? Please dance with a partner, so you do need a partner. And you put your hand on your uh, partner's buttock. And then you do very little steps. It okay, is a nice. Very, very dynamic uh, dance. Okay, good dancing, nice. I like this. What's good? Well, I like how he said that. I like how he said that. Who is this woman? Oh, this is actually hard as fuck. I'm like, I said Nathalie, that's crazy. I okay. None of these songs really transition into each other, I feel like. Natalie Neal. Alright, not Nathalie, sorry. Uh, I think that track was a tribute to her. Talking about her in a very positive way. I don't know who she is. Uh, maybe I should find out. Actually, no, I'm not going to look it up. Y'all right, can tell me in the comments. So, um, yeah, I think he's kind of praising her in a way. I can't really tell if it's if it's in a worship, like a, like a God kind of way, because it does seem like she has a lot of power, at least in his life. But yeah, the instrumentation on that track, man, I was just feeling that throughout the whole thing, like throughout like 10 minutes. I think I enjoyed his singing on that song the most so far, easily. I think on both verses, his vocals were just kind of effort. It just felt like he was effortlessly flowing. And his energy was just kept increasing, and it was—I thought it was crazy. All right, the final track is uh, the title track. To be kind. Mm. Guitar sounds more acoustic than anything else on here so far. I'll be doing that too. That vocal layering is different. Right. 
That drum roll was crazy. Is shit gonna get crazy? Yep. Yep. Are we chilling out now? Are we chilling? Okay, uh, what a crazy way to wrap everything up, man. Uh, I think that ended kind of optimistically. You know, I'm going to say it ended kind of optimistically. I think maybe he's referring to a baby here. A baby that has like a, kind of like a lifetime of possibilities. And its purpose at kind of, I think maybe to be kind is maybe the purpose of life within this album and it kind of kind of represents the positive aspects of humanity here to be kind rather than a lot of the uh topics we talked about on this album were kind of negative and I, but i think this kind of it kind of focuses on the on the good side of it this song and the song before definitely did that i get the vibe that maybe he's talking about i don't know about uh some, some i don't know about him as a baby or some sort of baby saying uh you know listening just listening you know lost in a bed you know because obviously you know really can't really comprehend much so all, all you can really be is kind and you know be new instrumentally very crazy as well but i mean obviously I'm, I'm expecting that at this point but yeah i thought that was a great way to end the album so yeah i think maybe this album was just about uh just the cruelty of human nature in general and uh some bright positive aspects of it is too but mainly i think uh it focused on negative behaviors and emotions i don't really i don't really understand how kirsten supine and uh toussaint overture i don't know i can't i still can't pronounce it uh kind of tie into all all of that but i think lyrically uh you know songwriting wise this whole album just basically summarizes uh, the human psychology and the only positive thing that we can really see is just maybe the innocence of a child at least that's the conclusion that i drew from the final track so yeah that's my take on the album that was crazy that was very good but i can't even like i need to listen to this at least three or three more times to fully grasp a lot of the sounds that i'm even hearing i can't even talk I, I, most of the time i didn't even talk about the production because i didn't really understand everything that was happening at the peak of songs so yeah that's my swans to be kind review uh i might do another poll of the next one uh that i should do just to kind of reset people's thoughts and opinions on where i should go next so yeah if you enjoyed the video leave a like if you're new here feel free to subscribe and i will catch you later thank you